Welcome to the Lounge Lizards podcast. It's so good to have you here. It's a leisure and lifestyle podcast founded on our love of premium cigars, as well as whiskey, travel, food, work, and whatever else we feel like getting into. My name is Gizmo. Tonight, I'm joined by Rooster, Senator, Pagoda, Grinder, and Bam Bam. And our plan is to smoke a cigar, drink some cognac, talk about life, and of course, have some laughs. So take this as your 85th official invitation to join us and become a card-carrying lounge lizard. Plan to meet us here once a week. We're going to smoke a New World cigar tonight, share our thoughts on it, and give you our formal lizard rating. We discuss the recent decline in cigar imports, we do a deep dive on Martell's brand history, and we discuss how collecting cigars is about buying time and new experiences, all among a variety of other things for the next 90 minutes. So sit back, get your favorite drink, light up a cigar, and enjoy as we pair Martell VSOP Cognac with the Padron Family Reserve 85 years in Maduro. A beautiful Robusto tonight from Padron on the pod. It's the Family Reserve, 85 years in Maduro, and it's a 50 ring gauge cigar by five and a quarter inches. Boys, we love Padron Nights. Sure we do. On the pod. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this one I've had a lot. Yeah, this is no exception yeah. to uh, certainly my positive experience with the with the brand. Love the size yeah. on this. It's a great size. So it's a little shorter, I guess, than an Exclusivo, right? That's what I thought. Is it the? It, it's, I don't know. It's very close. What's an exclusive? Five and a half, maybe. Yeah, I think it's five and a half. Yeah. So, so it's a quarter, five, five, quarter. Five, and five and a quarter. quarter. Five and a quarter. Interesting. So yeah, I think yeah, it's a quarter of an inch. Like, it takes the architect to see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear you're good with measurements. Oh yeah. <laughs> How much do we owe you for that, Bam? <laughs> uh, I'll send the invoice tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. The oh. inflation. <laughs> All right, boys. Let's cut this thing. See, we're getting on the cold draw on the wrapper. It's been a minute since we've done a Padron, but uh, we wanted to do one tonight, specifically this one, as we have reached episode 85. Can wow. you believe that? Officially 85. 85. Incredible. Tonight. Incredible. So uh, we decided to do the 85-year celebration of uh, Jose Padron's birthday, which is what this cigar was released to celebrate, and we are aligning that with our 85th episode tonight. There's some Look days I feel 85. <laughs> Grinder is a little out of protocol right now. Uh, yes, he is. <laughs> 85 episodes, still light and early. You feel sometimes you're 85? <laughs> the first time I've ever lived. Well, I heard you were smoking Exclusivos in 1945. <laughs> <laughs> is that real? I think that's real. <laughs> 20 years before the company was founded. Um, what are you guys getting on the well, culture on the rapper? Made. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, on the Exclusiva, when I got on the cold draw, I do get cocoa and coffee. I'm not getting either of those on this. Yeah, this definitely has a different flavor profile mm-hmm. than, the, uh, than the 64 line does. And the 26, too. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly expecting this to be quite a bit more full. It is. Um, but it's still still smooth. I get, like, raisin on the cold draw. I was just going to say that. Yeah, raisin spot on. I think what you will see is like right in the beginning, you get a lot of spice mm-hmm. that kind of fades and kind of balances out yep. towards the middle. Yeah. And that DNA comes through as you go through it that we all love. All right. Let's do this, boys. Let's light this thing. The Padron Family Reserve, 85 years in Maduro tonight. Again, it's a 50 ring gauge New World cigar by five and a quarter inches. And like. A lot of the other cigars in the Family Reserve line celebrates the birthday uh, of the late founder, Jose Padron. This is this is actually the only one that's, you know, it's his his birthday. Yeah, that's true. So the 45, 46, 44, 44, 45, and 46 were just the year, anniversary years. So the 45 was my go-to Padron for a very, very long time. Until Senator introduced me to the Exclusiva. That kind of transitioned me out of, out of these more fuller-bodied Family Reserve cigars. That's an interesting to go down in yeah, strength. What, but you know, the flavors flavor, are different than that Exclusiva. The, yeah, the, the big thing is, I mean, Bam had given me one of these that he was smoking for a while. And I said to him, like, why, are, why smoke this? The, the issue was it, it had rough edges. It, it wasn't just that it was a lot of flavor. It was just not delivered as smoothly as I feel like the uh, 64 line delivers flavor. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a big advantage. You don't compromise flavor when you smoke the 64 line. I just think it's delivered in a really nice, approachable way. It's yeah. smooth. And it's very approachable price-wise. Where this one is certainly a bit more pricey. This what is, is this coming in at? This is uh, maybe like 21 
So for a box of ten, which is the only way you can get these, yeah, is probably a little over two hundred bucks. Yeah, two hundred thirty bucks. Yeah, about that. Okay. I for some reason thought it would be more. Hmm. Yeah, I remember at the previous lounge it used to be two twelve. That's and, true, and that was our allocation for That's like true. the month. Mm-hmm. So this was like perfect. Mm. What are you guys getting on the uh, on the light? It's definitely you more get a spice. Yeah, a little spicy, a little more the chocolatey thing. Spice, coffee. espresso, coffee. Espresso. Yeah, yeah, more espresso, deep coffee. Yeah, rich, rich flavors. Yeah, where an exclusivo is more cocoa for me. But this is an. I think it's in the beginning you get that spice and then it kind of dissipates, backs off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's definitely a full cigar. Oh yeah, it, medium full to full. Post dinner smoke. Absolutely. So padrones they started in 1964. 1964, yeah. And hence the 19 the 44 anniversary, the 45th and the 46th and then the 85th was his birthday. Yep. And then in the other line in 1926 line they had the 80 years and the 90th which were the uh, the bookend 5 year celebrations of his birthday around this one. Right. But this one's in the family reserve line. Those and are- this is the most aged tobacco that they put into cigars. 10 10 years. I Ten did years not of know that. Tobacco. I didn't yeah. know that. The entire family family reserve line uses ten, 10 years. Is that right? Yeah. And the other lines are seven, yeah? I four to seven? No, I've... the 64 is four years, okay. and the 26 is five years. I'm interesting. These are aged 10 years. Wow. Which, you know, you think about the age on that Nicaraguan tobacco mm-hmm. at 23 bucks a stick, 25 bucks a stick even. That's a real value in my eyes. Agreed. For a refined... You know, Nicaraguan experience, especially something that's going to give you as much as this one is. Yeah, and that fermentation gives you that punch. Yeah, and it also is very, very smooth. Like even right now, like on the third puff, that spice has kind of gone back. Mm, it's for not, you, but no, <laughs> you still feel it a bit. You, you know, I haven't had a lot of family reserves. What's so special about the family reserves? If you know anything about we it, we just talked about it. Steve, <laughs> ten, no, it's ten-year aged tobacco. Yeah, that's it. All of them. Yeah, the entire family yeah. reserve line. And yeah, and because of that aging, there's a fermentation that takes place. It's a richer, I think, experience. And this is the most premium tobacco, and they're picking the fields to for stuff to age. This this is the the best allocated stuff that they have is put in those, you know, uh, in those storage facilities to to be aged for ten years because they think it's going to give them the best shot to produce fantastic cigars celebrating these birthdays and milestones. They make um, a family reserve fifty. That's yes, in a shorter cigar. Yep. And then that's one of my favorite cigars of all time. The, the natural, hammer? the actual, no. the nat, not the hammer. So oh. it's actually they have two fifty years at Padron. Okay, they have the hammer, which is called the fifty year, I believe, and then the one that Grinder's talking about is actually the fiftieth. I can't wait for us to do the hammer. The hammer, it's it, coming. I had one last week, it, and I sent you guys all the photograph. It is wow, Phenomenal wow, cigar. what an experience! Yeah. Amazing, incredible. Cigar. And that's a very expensive cigar. Yeah. That's like fifty bucks. But yeah, grinder the the fiftieth that you're mentioning from this line um, is really really good. It's a shorter cigar though. Short, yeah. yeah. It's like a, I guess it's like a short robusto. Yeah. That's the one you handed out at the birth of your daughter. Oh well, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's so, a, that's one of my favorites. That that that's one of those cigars that like, I think it turned me on a Padron and like really good cigars when I first started getting into. When I was throwing away RNJs and Monte Cristos and stuff from Dominican, I was like, give me the good stuff, you know. I love the cigar. I, you know what I find about this? Maybe more than any other Padron or New World, I really enjoy this when I pull, when I pull the draw. The slower I pull the draw into my mouth, the better the experience is. I agree with that. So it, it's really odd. I don't know why. It's just with the family reserve, you can't smoke these quickly. You it cannot. gets harsh really fast. I wish that weren't the case because, I mean, usually the flavor profile is so enjoyable. You want to just kind of keep drawing, but you, you're you forced to smoke this slower. It's oh, honestly a little down. bit frustrating. But yeah. I am getting a bit of a white pepper with my coffee note that I'm getting here. It's enjoyable, but it's there. That strength is there right away. Yeah, this is a really beautiful cigar. Yeah. So, boys, 85 episodes. Wow. Can you believe it? You must be a proud papa. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't killed each other yet. That's a milestone. <laughs> well. Maybe we should celebrate that. <laughs> this, this is true. <laughs> been close a couple of times. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> On and off air. No, it's a, I just I think it's a really um, 
you know, obviously we're coming up on episode 100, which I can't wait to do um, in 15 weeks. But, you know, this is um, when you when you see 85th on the calendar, knowing how great these cigars are, it's like you got to do the Padron 85th for, for you know, we, we, for this is our 85th, 85th episode. I mean, all we do is smoke cigars and drink expensive scotch and tequila and all kinds of spirits spirits yeah. i mean how bad could it's, it's be? not that terrible <laughs> it's not terrible <laughs> but did you all think we'd make it this far when we started off in a very modest space it was so much fun still is yeah 85 episodes it's pretty yeah. crazy it is yeah i didn't think that but you know i mean every single week i kind of look forward to whether it's a tuesday night wednesday yeah. night whenever we do the pod it's just so enjoyable absolute highlight it's yeah great. it's, it's yeah. a break from the week yeah you know and I just like coming, like you said, I mean, like we sit down and we get to share our experience. You know, I, I, I definitely don't use the word expertise because I don't think that we're experts. But I like to share our experience with our listeners and just that feedback loop that, that gets going with, with the listeners. It, we, I love it so much. It's well, incredibly rewarding. That organic communication pipeline that's now created with the rest of the world, that yeah. is very special. Yeah, it's yeah. really amazing. That's amazing. And, you know, listen, I know a lot of folks that do a podcast, start a podcast, and after four episodes, they're done. Yeah. You know, and here, this is 85th on the number, but this is probably actually episode like 91 or 92 with yeah. all the special yeah. episodes we've well, released. I think there's a lot of podcasts out there that are kind of, they're sponsored by certain companies, so mm -hmm. they're kind of pushing product, and we don't do that, you know. That's true. Except Padron. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we I mean, do it naturally <laughs> well because we love it so much and there's no hidden incentive because of that right so this is the love of the experience and i think that comes out in the recording yeah and you know what if we didn't like this cigar tonight we're gonna tell you oh yeah the cigar by the way is phenomenal yeah it's incredible it's like incredible it. so yeah to the listeners out there you know we're doing a, a, a shorter victory lap than we will in 15 weeks but 85 episodes to have you stick stick with us and share this with your friends and email us and buy merch and and send us cigars. We've had so many listeners send us cigars, which is just incredible. Keith from We're, Orlando, thanks yeah, for the cigars. We've had yeah. so many. I can we have a lot of actually coming up that will you know we'll celebrate the listeners with it shared them coming up in future episodes. But, Can't wait for that. Um, we have a lot of stuff that listeners have sent, and it's just it's incredibly gratifying, and I'm very very thankful mm -hmm. um, that the listeners. Trust us to show up every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. with the new episode. Yeah. I think I can also speak for everyone in the room. We're thankful for all your work is. Um, sure. Absolutely. You put this together. You, you know what you're doing. The technical proficiency is off the charts. Fantastic, dude. Thank you. Cheers. That's awesome. Thank Love you, boys. Dude. Senator, what do you think about episode 85? <laughs> I'm getting a deep dive on Martel. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm sipping. I don't want to go too quick, but... Is it pretty uh, good? Yeah. I was reading the Wikipedia page. On Martel? The only uh, thing I know I about I it is that, that they... Uh, the only thing I know about it is they... The reason why it came up for us is we were looking for other cognac to do, and we had hit quite a few of the popular brands, obviously. You know, we'd done the Hennessy's and the Remy's and... We've even done uh, uh, Ducey. But uh, this one, I guess there's a competition that's pretty popular that they won a lot of the different categories. I think they won VS, VSOP, and XO this year. You serious? Yeah. They're, so that's uh, I sent it to Senator. I was like, we got to do this. I will say, Pagoda, this cigar is right up your power alley. It really right? is. No doubt. You know, I, I was just thinking about it. I said, I keep uh, buying the Dominicana. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the around Davidoff. the same price point. Davidoff, 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 yeah. 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 And I really enjoy that. And, you know, every time I want something a little bit, you know, familiar, I, you know, I think yesterday I pulled up uh, the El Senador from E.P. Carrillo. Mm -hmm. and, That's uh, right. You were smoking that yesterday, the La Historia. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I think this is probably the cigar I should go to. I, this has really been wonderful in the first couple of puffs. And I think this will, uh, you know, definitely. Uh, honestly, I think he's a great Great candidate for the family reserve. You should be going through them all. That's this is all. Yeah, I've you. never, I've never really indulged in the family reserve. I've never at all. saw. I haven't seen you smoke any of the no. family reserve. You should try so it. You should and then try the forty fifth. That I used to yeah. love that cigar. That's a longer that cigar. cigar. That's like it's six, six and a half inches. I think the forty five. Um, it's no, it's a small. It's about the same size. No, it's, it's longer. It's, longer. It, yeah. it's been a while since I've had it. The other ones I love too. I don't reach for them very often, just because I go for the torpedo and the sixty four line. Mm. 
Um, but the torpedoes in this line, I think yeah. it's the 44 and the 46. The number 44 is outrageous. <sighs> They're great cigars. They are. Just Listen, the 44 is the torpedo. Ah, 44 yeah. is a torpedo. Okay. Yeah, it's very Got good. It. Very, very good. So. so the 45 is 52 by 6. Uh, okay. So three quarters of an inch longer than this guy. Yeah, and the 46 is 56 by five and a half. And you know okay. what, Rooster? We were talking about family reserve cigars that celebrate uh, Jose Padron, the, founders, the late founder's birthday. We mustn't forget the new release, that 95th, that right. short, fat, 60, 60 ring gauge cigar that they just put out last year. Has anyone That's had that? One. No. I yeah. haven't. I have. Yeah, I was. Yeah. It was good. Really? It's pretty good. I mean, it's a, it's a big ring gauge. Padron but DNA. Yeah. 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 Smooth. The other thing that's cool too, uh, Rooster pointed out, um, is the packaging presentation that these cigars come in. These, te- these small 10 count boxes, it's the only way you can get them. And they have the, you know, it's the classic Padron box that they recycle. But on the top is a sticker uh, covering the entire yeah. um, the top of the box. It's beautiful. And it's embossed with the Family Reserve and, and Jose Padron's signature on it. And then underneath, Rooster. Yeah, it's the entire family's signature. There's at least uh, three, five, eight, yeah, like, like ten. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. Ten family members. I love that box. It's a perfect dimension. It's very convenient to carry around. It's yeah. awesome. And it's really easy to fit in the tower. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Or anywhere, Tupperware, because it's just so small and tight. It works it's with a jigsaw like a puzzle. Bulk, yeah, it's a perfect <laughs> jigsaw. It's like te- playing Tetris. It's perfect <laughs> it, it for is. that. Uh, so I, for me, the 85th episode, I, I, I just love when we have moments like this because we're used to doing this every week and, you know, we enjoy spending time together, smoking cigars, obviously drinking nice spirits. But when we hit these kind of milestones, I love that it forces you to kind of look back and appreciate what we've done and what we're obviously building. And um, I especially get excited because I think we normally pair a pretty good cigar with, uh, with, a, good with spirit. a fine spirit yeah. for, uh, for some of these occasions. So I, I just love moments like this. I feel there's a bit of a energy in the air today because of the milestone. I love that feeling. Yeah, and and when you when you know that you're getting a premium experience, you know, in the cigar, it just elevates. You know, it's like when you're driving to the lounge and you know what's in your your <laughs> your travel, uh, you know, your carrying case. When you know what's in there and you're thinking about yep. what you're going to smoke and who you're going to sit with and what you're going to do, it um, all matters. It just it all it all elevates. It all it elevates it, but it all matters. So before we hit the hundredth episode, there's going to be the ninetieth. Do we do the ninetieth? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do like the ninetieth, by the way. I like, I like the way so, you're thinking. You know, I like the way you're thinking, Rooster. <laughs> Great idea. Yeah. Do a Padron just That's, every five episodes? Yeah, we're going to need a. I mean, if if there's any if there's any cigar manufacturer <laughs> that's going to milestone all of our you know major events, it's got to be Padron. Yeah, you know, well, we yeah. should have done the forty fifth, forty sixth. Yeah, what happened? We'll forty five, forty six. Can we can we do a re? Can we do a redo? <laughs> yeah, we'll go back and redo those episodes. With those yeah, cigars. you better call Jorge. <laughs> Let him know. <laughs> yeah, it's a great cigar. Great cigar. I'm trying not to go through it too quickly because, like you said, Senator, it's, it gets a little harsh if you do. You, you know these these it. cigars are so well constructed. Yeah, look at look at you the ash. never have any draw issues. I love holding just it. Perfect, perfect. razor perfect. sharp. Yeah, bright white ash. Yeah, yeah. It's very you know your point grinder. It's very elegant in the hand. But that's typical, right? Yeah, you're spoiled when you're a padron guy. Yeah, <laughs> they very do typical. bring a smile on my face. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And to think about all the cigars that we've spent twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, a hundred dollars on mm-hmm. Cuba and non to get. This experience for twenty five bucks, twenty three bucks, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Inaccessible. It's accessible. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the pairing, Senator. The so, Martell. So Martell. I mean, Giz had the idea for us to do Martell, which was a good one because for whatever reason, I have not really had much Martell at all, but it has just a tremendous history. Um, so Martell was founded in seventeen fifteen. Wow. It's got over 300 years they've been doing this. It's wow. insane. They're the oldest uh, cognac house in the world and the oldest of the the big four. So we've done Remy, obviously huge. Have we done Hennessy? Yep. Yes. We've done several. Okay. Yes, we have. We've done Hennessy. They rated well as well. 
I did. And the only other one is Corvassier. We have not we've, done yet. I don't think we've done a Corvassier. Okay, so okay. we'll need to do a Corvassier at some point. Those are the biggest. The only reason I know that is, A, the pronunciation, the pronunciation <laughs> and trying to spell it properly. <laughs> that's how I know we didn't you do it. Know. Only, <laughs> every that's, time. that's what sticks in my brain. Anytime I hear Corvassier, I only think of one thing. That song. Pass the Cavassier. <laughs> no, from uh, SNL. What's his name? The Cavassier, yeah. What's oh uh, um the uh, SNL guy who who does like the big pimp. He's like a pimp. Yeah. <laughs> and he's and he's drinking a Cavassier. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's graphic in some of his uh conversations. What's what's the skit? I don't remember, I but I can go into detail on what he says. Are you, ta- <laughs> are you, ta- are you talking about Will? Fa- Will uh, no, no, no. It's uh what's his name? Hammond? I mean, he talks about satisfying a woman, and you can never really do it unless it's very specific. It's very very graphic. I, I can't go there. <laughs> Just Google it. La- yeah. Ladies man. Ladies man. Ladies man. The ladies man. All right, Senator, tell us about Martel. Yeah, so it was founded by this guy, uh, Gene Martel, who was born in uh, 1694 in Jersey. So there's a funny tie to where we all live. Old what? Jersey, though, not New Jersey. Old Jersey, Jersey but that, <laughs> that's where New Jersey is named after. He was born in um, Camden. <laughs> <laughs> he, was born, he was born in Patterson, like yeah. them. Sea caucus. But it's also important because so Jersey's the largest I, uh, island in the English Channel, and there's a really strong affinity for Martell in the UK. And I never understood why, but now this is starting to make sense um, because of the founder's birthplace, basically. But the location of uh, Jersey, the island, is actually closer to France. So it's like this interesting kind of, there's a huge French influence there, which is why this guy presumably got so passionate about wanting to make cognac. Hmm. Um, so he founded it, obviously built this enduring, successful company and brand. At some point, Seagram's bought Martell, and I don't think many look at that as a good period for the brand. It Seagram's basically neglected Martell as a brand. It was known as this really high-end, prestigious brand, and Seagram's kind of never continued to build on that. So eventually, sales were plummeting, and they got bought by Pernod Ricard, one of like the huge conglomerates that owns a ton of brands now. And they really resurrected Martel to what it kind of once was, which is this ultra premium uh, cognac brand. Uh, the The brand itself has been, I was just reading, I couldn't believe, like some of the biggest moments in history, Martel was what was served during it. Um, a number of the king's coronations uh, in the UK, we obviously just had a coronation recently. Yep. Um, I, I'm sure they probably had Martel. Uh, the signing of the treaty that ended World War One, they drank Martel. Um, since 2015, it's now the official cognac of the Palace of Versailles. So it's like all these just like really fancy, big, important moments. Like this cognac has has found its way there. The reason I haven't had much of it, and and now I'm regretting it because I'm as I'm reading about the history, I'm like, wow, there's there's some real substance to this company. They most cognac houses they make a VS, a VSOP, and an XO, and that's it. Some have recently started, like we love with Remy, the 1738. Yeah, in between. Exactly. Yeah, introduced yeah. a whole new category between a VSOP and an XO. With Martel, I've been deterred because they make so many types, and I feel like my impression of it has been it's like just marketing gimmickry. Uh, a There's money not, grab. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have they have a VS, they have the VSOP, which is what we're drinking tonight. They have the Cordon Bleu, which is supposed to be like one of their original, famous, ultra premium uh, cognacs. They have an XO. They have one called Blue Swift, which <laughs> I have never figured out what that was until now. I had to do a little homework for this. It was meant to um, uh, kind of uh, recognize the U.S. market, which is very important to them. They age it in ex bourbon American bourbon barrels, so that was meant to be a kind of a unique release. And I think that that also falls between a VSOP and an XO, so kind of like what Remy did. So I'd actually be very interested to try that at some point because we love that in between category. We do that's the cognac I reach for. Oh, absolutely, is the seventeen thirty eight. That's a weekly Remy. weekly drink. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Great, great, great value. Great drink. So just a a great story. I have a whole new level of respect just uh, reading a bit about their history, and um, I'm excited to dive into this and certainly try more of what they make. All right, let's try it, boys. I have to say, I've I've already jumped right into it. I've I've imbibed as well. It's pretty good. It's probably, for me, unique to the other two VSOPs that we've had. It's very cherry forward for me. It is. 
on the on the nose if you tr- if you try that it's very cherry cherry heavy and on the finish is long cherry and honey it's and un- it, very unusual i'm this, actually look at this refined palate he's got you know? it's really amazing <laughs> 85 85 episodes later i, I hope learned, so i learned from the best <laughs> i i i Damn i you. echo i echo the cherry i think this is a lovely drink this, this is really is nice really it's fantastic. unique i find it's though unique. that it's um it, it's going through my it's it's uniquely going into my nose in a way that i think some of the others do, don't mm-hmm. um almost like a scotch wood in a way it's truly aromatic on it's the nose. it's yeah. i'm i really like it yeah and it's unusual that cherry that's you don't get that on the other vsops the thing i also give this credit i mean most vsops they say that's the first kind of category where you would want to maybe start to be able to drink it neat, but really XO is what you would always drink neat. I think most VSOPs benefit from some ice. I mean, even Remy VSOP, as much as I think it's good, I think it really needs a little bit of ice. Yeah, a chip or two. Yeah. That's it. Not a ton. This without ice, I mean, this, first of all, the color. I mean, just look at the how it rich and dark and deep that's gorgeous. the yeah. color of this spirit is. Yeah, red amber. Exactly, and and this honestly looks just closer to an XO than it does a VSOP, and how it drinks, I mean, it's smooth, neat. It is, and it has viscosity, and it coats your mouth nicely, and it lingers. Yeah. Do they make an XO? They do. They do, but that's what's also so confusing to me about this brand. So the Cordon Bleu was always viewed as like their... I hate that name, by the way. Let me I, just say. I agree. Because all I think about is Chicken Cordon Bleu, which is, <laughs> which is one of the worst entrees ever <laughs> of all time. Really? Horrible. No, I used to like that. Oh, God. Isn't there ham on it or something? Yeah, it's yeah. chicken yeah. stuffed with ham. Oh, yeah. disgusting. Like it's pig and bird, <laughs> man. <laughs> and cow. Multiple no, species. And then they pour like they pour like a cream dressing on it. It's disgusting. Right. All right, sorry. Oh, I'm that. with you. <laughs> um, so the, the Cordon Bleu was always kind of like their flagship ultra premium, uh, offering. And I assume it's an XO, but I find it strange that they wouldn't just call it an XO. I don't know why they need to create this other name. And then apparently they had very early on a dedicated XO. They stopped making it for a very significant period of time. And then only recently, as in within like the last 20 years, they resurrected the XO. So I, I'm just, the whole thing is very odd. I, I don't know why you don't just keep it simple. It's like, there's three levels in cognac. There's three levels in tequila. It's yeah. usually very simple. But having this now and reading more about it, there may be a method to their madness where before I just kind of dismissed them as, well, they just pump out a bunch of random shit every year to market and it's not any more a serious brand, but clearly it is. Do they still make the Cordon Bleu? They do. Hmm. It's about two hundred a bottle, which is wow. what an XO wow. is. Yeah. So that's why I'm so confused. It's, it's like that's that's what an XO would be priced at. Mm-hmm. Now they've resurrected the XO, so I'm not sure what the relationship is between the two. Mm-hmm. How I much? D- how much was this? Yeah, good question. Uh, mo- like any VSOP, like fifty five. Yeah, it was, oh, it was oh, under really? sixty. It's a Moderately great price. Point. It was sub sixty. Pretty big jump between the VSOP and the yeah. XO. Yeah, that's it's it's, huge. That's across the board. Which is why I give Remy so much credit figuring out that there needs to be an in between category. Yeah. It's like, you know, I like Remy VSOP, but, and I love the X. I mean, that got probably one of the highest spirit ratings. It was ratings. a 10, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, like a perfect 10. That we was were obsessed pu- with it. Pure nectar. It's incredible. It, you can just go through that, almost that entire bottle, and be very comfortable and satisfied. Yeah. That's what's troubling is it's 200 It, you know, it really bucks. is. That's yeah, the thing. It's like for most people, we're not going to no. drink every day a $200 spirit, period. And so, so that's actually higher than a VSOP, the 1738. Yes, it's in, in between that and the XO. And that's at a very reasonable price point of like 65 a bottle, where it, that is something that we would drink every day. And uh, I'd be curious to try some of what Martell has made in yeah. between, because this VSOP, this is probably the smoothest VSOP we've done. This is great. It, it is. I will say a couple of things, though. It Because of the unique, for me, this is just my opinion, the unique flavor profile of this drink some could say that it is a kind of like an acquired taste to enjoy this because it's a little different than the other two VSOPs, just slightly. Right. Some could say it's medicine-y. Some could say this. That cherry note, it's really forward. That's a surprise. I don't know if I would have enjoyed this as much had I not been initiated, to your point, mm-hmm. with the other cognac we have done on the pod. I think if we pulled this one out first... Uh, that's what I'm trying to. That's what that's I'm saying. Exa- I know. I'm yeah. just. You know, I'm piggybacking on what you're saying. I think it would have been a little like, "Whoa, what is this?" 
Whereas now, like having gotten a little bit of an education and, mm. and kind of, you know, the palate kind of adjusting to what cognac is, it's it's definitely more palatable. I think Bam's point is spot on. I mean, what we're now seeing, trying these different brands, they each have a very distinct style and flavor profile. And I think Hein is a great example of this. Yeah. We all started this journey kind of with Remy. Uh, we Hennessy. did Croix, Croise, mm -hmm. Hennessy. And those actually, all three of those are kind of similar in they the are. same family they and flavor are. profile. And we were liking what we were trying. When we had Hein, everybody in the room was like, oh, wow, this is different. This is more floral. And it was just a whole different profile. Mm -hmm. And now Martel, to Bam's point, this is also an entirely separate flavor profile. It almost feel, seems and tastes like a different category of the VSOP lines that are out there. Where the Hein, it's like a hybrid between the two, in my opinion. That's extraordinarily drinkable. It's delicious. It's awesome. And don't forget we did that other Hein that was disappointing. Oh, yeah. The H by Hein. <laughs> yeah. The H that was by Hein. Meant to be their more budget-friendly. It's like yes. 40 a bottle, but that's best for mixing, basically. Yeah. You know, I, I also think that the cherry note and, and the, the, the profile and richness of the, the pairing is really complementing this family reserve. Totally because agree. I think that if you have something that doesn't have the body, that it doesn't have the viscosity, and isn't going to compete, I think the cigar will overpower mm -hmm. I'm you glad know, you a said weaker that. spirit. I'm glad you said that because I think for any lizard, as you're, you know, we're always thinking about what do I want to pair with this cigar. And I just always think of cognac, like, you know, Giz sent basically a shopping cart of stuff that he recently, you know, bought for the pod. And he's like, <laughs> what should we pair with this? And I just picked the cognac because. Whenever you have a really richly flavored cigar, doesn't matter what it is, just rich in flavor, cognac nine times out of 10 is going to pair extremely well because cognacs, especially VSOP and, and really XOs, it's concentrated, smooth, mm -hmm. flavorful spirit. And, and, and it's just and it's the, Yeah. And the richness of the VSOPs. Yeah. That's what really works with a rich cigar like this. Yeah. You, you yeah. know, the long finish really, really helps. Yeah. It's a well. great point. You know, it just yeah, exactly uh, right. go to your palate. That like finish fantastic. is fantastic after you take a sip and then you go for a draw. It That finish lingers and it, and it co-mingles. It's really quite nice. And I feel like the cognac is actually, aside from the conversation, which is slowing down my wanting to pull on the cigar, I feel like the cognac's finish, it sticks around so long that I'm not wanting to go to the cigar as quickly maybe as Good I normally point. would. Like, I think that they're kind of playing off of each other in a really nice way. Yep. It's a really elegant experience. It is. Have agree. you noticed how the spice has gone down? Oh, yeah. 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 It is really very yeah. smooth. This yeah, is yeah it went down cigar. pretty quickly, actually. You were right about that. It's yeah. really, like, it's like very mellowed out is probably the word. It's still, still full-bodied smoothness. Oh, it's, Look, it's definitely a rich, full cigar. Yeah. But the, the initial spice has subsided. It has dissipated. Yeah. Yeah. Look at Gizmo's ash. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that's I awesome. have, what, an inch and a half? Yeah. Going on two inches of perfect. Yeah. It's awesome. Burn line, amazing ash that's just not ready to go anywhere. I got to slow down. I'm going way too quick. Yeah, slow down. Yeah. Look at me. Yeah. It's, isn't it? It's so good, though, right? I love, you, you know, these are the cigars stop. I love. I you can't, you know. There's, it's hard to find a full really rich cigar that can knock you with nicotine if you're going too fast that if you're doing it right delivers the incredible smoothness that this cigar delivers i think I, that's that's kind of why like these padron family reserve line like kind of works for me because i smoke slow yeah mm -hmm. right so i'm yeah. not like pushing it so i don't i never get the nicotine i don't get that harshness Mm -hmm. I, I'm not getting it either, and I usually don't because I try to slow down on these. But I think if you rush through this, I think you're going to get knocked around a little bit. Oh yeah, especially on an empty stomach. Oh yeah, you know I know you're having this for breakfast, but so be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on an empty stomach. I ate lunch last, so it's been a while. <laughs> Rooster, Rooster, have you? I don't know if I've ever had this cigar before. Have you given me this cigar before? I don't remember. I don't remember either, because this is like, this is a truly awesome cigar for me so this where, is, as someone who loves the 50th in this line as much as you do how does this compare to the 50th for you uh, it's very different i mean the 50th that i smoke is natural oh uh, you smoke the natural yeah so. it's a very it's just a very different cigar i mean this the obviously a lot a lot of flavor that's a little smoother not much smoother 
frankly. Um, I would say this, as far as like, I would rank this just as high as the other 50th that I love so much, mm. you know, and uh, the other family reserve rather. And I would rank, I would put this higher than the 50th Maduro. So I wanted to go back briefly to the Martell thing, if you don't mind, just for a second, because what's amazing to me about the story you told is how much rich history they have, how ingrained, especially in the British culture, it seems like they are, European culture, how, I don't know what the transaction dates and timeline of the Seagram's thing was. I'm assuming it's kind of aligning with my thought process here, but it's amazing to me, given everything you just said about it and about the brand and, where, and the way that they've ingratiated themselves in the, into the history of that country, how they're not in the top four. They're not in the top five of cognac producers. You don't ever hear about it. I, I heard about it because I read an no, article. No, they, they are. But not, and not in the States. I mean, not people aren't talking about them like they are. No, Remy it's or true. Hennessy it's very or true. Yeah. Cavassier or Doucet. I've, I mean, I've it's never a marketing heard, exercise. I've never heard of this. Cognac. I haven't either. Yeah. I haven't either. So that's what's amazing to me is how I've never heard of it, but it's so yeah. ingrained. So here's what's really wild about this. In By 2015, Martell was producing around 14 million bottles of cognac a year, making it the second, the world's second largest cognac producer behind Hennessy. That's wow. crazy. How they were out producing more than Remy is beyond crazy. me. I mean, Remy Martin, but again, we're talking from the U.S. perspective. Remy Martin is in every... Every bar, everywhere, everywhere, sure, every sure. restaurant. I feel like I can get that at a gas station <laughs> anywhere in Patterson. It's true. I keep with, going to Patterson. With, I don't know why. I have, I have like gas it. stations I like in it. Patterson with a Philly Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> so the Seagrams uh, acquisition. They Seagrams bought it in 1987. And when did they sell it? They sold it in 2001. So that you know, that's a 14 yeah. year. Seems like a 14 year miss for them, right? And I'm guessing because we haven't heard of it. The, their primary market, of course, is Europe. Is that right? And other areas of the world. Europe, and they're huge in Asia. Asia, yeah. Not yeah, surprising. so I read something like, I think in China, Martel has like 25% of the cognac market wow. there, wow. which is pretty good. In that China, is wow. very good. Yeah. Well, there's there's only three other play, major players, though, right? Hmm. Well, there's four, right? Remy, Hennessy. So if they have a quarter uh, of, of the, the market, major, and then I mean, you have other brands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Heinz and other saying, things. Yeah. Are, yeah. But I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing. That That's just not... Something mm. that's talked about or marketed here. I mean, dude, there was a Remy commercial in the Super Bowl. That's true. There was a Remy Martin commercial during the Super Bowl. I couldn't believe it. Saw the 1738. I'm really happy we're doing this. Yeah. Really it's really are. good. Yeah. Have you have you guys seen the movie uh, Apocalypse Now? Yes. Oh yeah. So the classic. The, the the one claim to fame that that Martel has in like movies, um, in that movie. Was it in the, the house, in the forest? No, no. On the oh. bedside of Captain Willard, played by Martin Sheen, uh, Martel Cordon Bleu is on his bedside, and he drinks it. Really? The movie. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Love that movie. Well, he's good taste. It's a great movie. Great movie. <laughs> that's such a dark movie, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Marlon Brando. This cigar is fantastic. Yes, it is. What? It's in my... We it, knew it was going to be amazing. Yeah, but you know, I haven't had it in quite some time because mm -hmm. I smoke so many exclusive. I've had exclusivos the last four nights. I we I smoke so many of them, um, but to go to this is it is an elevated experience, um, in in what this gives you. I mean, this yeah. is really really. It's like really a richer, refined. richer, deeper. Flavor. It is yeah. now. You're not a. You don't frequent the Family Reserve. Will you now? I have a box of these. You do okay, and I have a box of forty fifth. Okay. Um, both in Maduro, my old staple, and I just don't reach for them that much, mm. you know, because I, I I think they're a pretty full experience. So unless it's something special or right. I have a big I don't know fatty steak dinner type yeah. thing, yeah. I'm I'm generally reaching for my exclusiva. What's interesting about this? I don't get a lot of cocoa on the typical draw, but on the retro hail, I get delicious cocoa notes. It's really quite nice. Grinder, have you been uh, retroing this? Yeah, and mm. how's the retro for you? Strong. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely got a punch. So, are you doing it every draw, or are you doing it every few? No, I'm probably doing it every fifth. Yeah, I do every other. Okay, yeah. every other is a lot. I, I, every for a cigar like this, yeah, not as I st definitely can do it. It's definitely delicious. There. It's still great. Yeah. I mean, it's amplifying the flavors wonderfully, but you know, it's still a strong cigar. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's definitely a strong. So cigar. it's not something I'm doing every other one. Now, here's a question I have for you guys. I mean, we're what we're coming up on halfway. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this is a cigar that is approachable mm. for someone who is 
let's say intermediate as mm-hmm. far as their journey. Or what is this going to kick? What does it, intermediate mean? Intermediate means smoking they're for two smoking. Years? No, they're smoking. Let's say a cigar a week. I think I think you're going to have some attrition if you were to give this cigar to ten intermediate smokers. You're going to have some attrition to people that. Yeah, put it I down. think especially if you have had the Exclusivo and you're very happy with it and yeah. you want to kick it up a notch and you want to try something a little bit richer, well, but in the similar uh, DNA. Here's one interesting this is, thing. This is where you would go. Senators had parties at his place. He's given out the Exclusivo to guys that haven't had a lot of cigars. I remember the story vividly. He generously handed out, I don't know, 10 or 12 of them. They all loved more than that. More, sure. and they loved it. And they loved it. Would you do that with this cigar? No, and that's the thing. I mean, th- that's why I think I, that answers this question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, again, guys may feel differently, but for me, this cigar, you, you have to really love a full-bodied cigar to appreciate this. I think if I gave this to someone, I mean, forget obviously someone who's a kind of beginner just getting into cigars, but even intermediate, this is a lot. Yeah, in a cigar, maybe so the I'm natural. Not, yeah, Maybe and the natural I was be... about to say 10 minutes ago when he mentioned the natural in the 50. The Padron line is probably the only line of natural cigars that I like, that I would smoke and be very happy with. That's just the personal thing. Because the DNA is there and they're so rich, regardless of the wrapper. I Maybe. I, I, the, the delta between Padron's naturals and their Maduros to me is not as stark as some of the other like bifurcation that some of these these manufacturers have in their Yeah, line. I'd be curious how it's many different. how many Maduros there's. I mean, they must sell way more Maduros yeah. than natural. Who knows? But I would. Think I don't so. know. I mean, I, I, I'm curious. I don't. Uh, it, uh, my bet, if if I would have to put money on it, I would bet they're selling 60, 40, 60 Maduro, forty natural. That would be it's my possible. Bet. I yeah. think that's probably right. I, I I don't think that it's as drastic as we make it seem. I mean, obviously we're skewed. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, maybe other than grinder, we're all buying. It's true. Um, uh, Maduro, ninety nine percent of the time. Hundred. Hundred percent <laughs> of the time. Yeah, me too, my man. <laughs> you know, but you know, this is a cigar to to kind of, you know, for this conversation. You look at Pagoda, who notoriously throughout the podcast likes a more full experience, likes a stronger cigar, loves the Dominicana, which is a pretty oomphy, you know, Dominican Davidoff. Loves the Exclusivo, loves the El Senador that we did from EP Creo. And his experience tonight, like to me, if your palate as a listener tracks with Pagoda, this is and you're in line with how Pagoda smokes and what he likes to smoke, this is a cigar that you need to buy now, yesterday. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You need this cigar. By Agreed. the way, I need to buy this yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better hurry up. Yeah, you, you, you know what it is? I don't even know why I never really reached out for the family reserve. And I might have tried a few here and there and I'm sure you guys have offered me a few and we've I've smoked a few of them. And, you know, like with me, it's like when it comes to Padron, I just enjoy them anyway, mm-hmm. right? Because they're so beautifully constructed, great smoke output, very flavorful, very satisfying. I mean, you can talk about it all the way through. And I love Padrones. In fact, most of us do over here. This is fantastic. I mean, it's the same price as the Dominicana. This, yeah. And that's yeah. what makes it ridiculous. And it's not rare. Yeah. Like the Dominicana is a limited release. That's going to go away very soon if it hasn't already. Yeah. You know, you're not going to be able to find that cigar. Yeah. The thing I will say about the Family Reserve for me, and this is where I think Rooster and I differ just in terms of our smoking habit, uh, how much we smoke. For me, this cigar, if I, if I can only have one cigar after a meal. I've got kind of a defined amount of time. I'm going to have dinner. I have time for one cigar and I'm done for the day. I would pick this up in a heartbeat. This is perfect. It would be incredibly satisfying. The thing I have, why I don't smoke as much of the family reserve is a lot of the time I'm having like a four or five cigar Mm -hmm. session and I, I couldn't put back two of these in a sitting. Oh, no way. So that's a great point. Where the Exclusivo for me, like why it's my staple cigar, I mean, I could smoke five of them and I would be just fine. It would it, It's just like the perfect balance for me of a lot of flavor, but super smooth in delivery where this, you got to take your time. You don't want this to kick you around and it delivers a tremendous amount of flavor. And I feel like if I had two of these, I, I wouldn't want a cigar for probably 48 hours. He's right. <laughs> it's tough to do multiple family reserves in a sitting. I'll, I'll even I know, do, I'll I think even do one better. I think scoffs at that a little bit. but uh, I'll do one better. <laughs> Preparing tonight, 
coming to do the pod, knowing we were doing this cigar, I really had difficulty thinking about if we do an after pod cigar mm. where we all sit together after we're done recording and have one. It was difficult for me to look in my tower and say, what am I going to follow that cigar up with tonight? Right. It like leaves, this to me is a finisher. Yeah. It leaves its mark on you. Yeah, for sure. Like even if you're getting a smooth, elegant, refined experience, mm-hmm. like it's all the boxes are checked when you're done with this cigar. You're, you're not looking for anything else. It's hard to go to a Cuban after this. It's a, nearly impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Except for Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> Rooster's looking at disbelief. Yeah, His eyebrows gonna, are going up and down. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. <laughs> He said I had it for breakfast. I knew we were going to smoke it tonight. Well, a lot of times I just smoke one cigar a night, so and this yeah. sometimes is yeah. it. This you is know, it, which makes sense for that. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. very satisfying a one cigar sitting. When's yeah. the last time you got smoked a four or five cigar? Oh. It had to be yes. with us yes. this morning. Yes, just morning. the other night. Literally, yeah. I'm not even exaggerating. Yesterday, but you can end with this. No, but right? uh, so you could, that's a good point. But I mean, not not after four cigars. It'll hit you really this. hard. That's though. too much. No, but Senator, well, I'm not like, talking about back to back. I'm talking about like one after end. breakfast, one after lunch, and then two after dinner. <laughs> That's four cigars. In four a day. flaming reserves in a day. No, no, no. I'm talking about different cigars. <laughs> right, I'm talking right, about right. Lighter one. Oh, after, sure. You know, sure. Start off with the GL one. You know, do like a Corona's Claro in the afternoon. Yeah. Do something else before dinner and this one after dinner. Now you cook. I just say this because the Padron 80th that we love so much and we reviewed on the podcast, that's also a full flavored cigar. But, but again, as I told the story, then I smoked four of them back to back. Like you can have multiple of those and still feel great. Yeah. If I had four of these, I'd die. <laughs> Back to I back. Don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. It's only he one would, Senator, you're getting weak. I would die. He would stumble out of the club. <laughs> I and, mean, I, and I kind of want to see that. I got it All of us would. I mean, are you kidding me? The I amount can't, that this puts off, four yeah. of these back to back? I can't imagine smoking two of these back to back. You're getting weak, Senator. Uh, disappointing. <laughs> no, I want to see you do this. <laughs> no, but like yesterday would have been the perfect ending because I, I was thinking about it. Remember, I hesitated. Should I smoke one more or not? And then obviously, uh, you know, it was... Um, one of those weekends where I was out before I joined all these guys for a cigar, yes, oh, you, yeah. and you I ended were, up you with were well calibrated. Yes, yeah. you were. <laughs> so ending with a, uh, you know, <laughs> Pagoda, Pagoda. Wait, let me just say, Pagoda, he was seeing Pagoda walks into the lounge tonight, <laughs> and I'm sitting there having a cigar. I'm watching the thing. He sits down. He pulls out his 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 scotch, his Balvenie, his double barrel. He looks at me. He said, "Yesterday I was here." And that was wasted. <laughs> and that was all he said. And then he poured himself a scotch. A double. <laughs> and I just looked at him. I'm like, okay. But to, yeah. to, today He's celebrating the new day. 85 episodes. Yeah, today the new day. You know? right. <laughs> the key but word I, was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think I do think that this cigar would have really been the perfect cigar for me yesterday. To end the night. Mm, every day. This is great. Thank you guys for introducing me to another cigar. Oh, yeah. I just think that, I, I, again, I think, for, you know, for what this delivers, 10 years of age on this Nicaraguan tobacco, to, to, to price this under 25, yeah, and that's, there's a real value in that big to time, me. Big time, big time. Especially for what we're, what we're experiencing here. Like, this oh, yeah. is really a nice celebratory cigar. What's nice is both the, the, the cognac and the cigar, they're settling in beautifully. So when you go back and forth, it's really delicious. The, the combination's fantastic. Uh, it's, it's awesome. And I'll be honest, as far as the pairing goes, and this isn't specific to Martel, what I'm about to say, I would I would almost only want this cigar with a cognac. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm deadly serious when I say that. Dude, you're not wrong. But, you know, it's, it's really amazing is, like, every time people think of cigars, and I'm talking about the average people, whoever you meet, they always talk about say. cigars with cognac. That's true. They never talk about whiskey mm. or tequila like we've tried, and we enjoy tequila with cigars now. Mm. And cognac just has something very special, yeah. especially with, you know, the full-bodied one. It's a historic pairing. It's, it's, right? it's you know, it's the, it's the nobility having their cognac in the smoking room <laughs> afterward with the cigar, you know. As they crack the whip on it's their a ritual. Workers, <laughs> but that's that's the thing that's impressive about it. I always just thought, like exactly like Ryan was saying, like the nobility drinking cognac. I just thought it was a, a, an issue of tradition and legacy and mm-hmm. what people should do in a nice moment or a celebratory moment. And I didn't. And, and when you actually try the spirit, and we're we're still early. I mean, we there's so much more for us to try. 
what's been so amazing to me, and I think a lot of us, it's been a realization of like, there's actually merit to it. Yeah, there's meat yeah. on that bone. Like, it really it makes, makes sense, sense why they pursue the spirit. Oh, yeah. Well, this is delicious. I'm really pleased with the pairing. I am also very, I'm usually, I'm not, I'm not drinking as much liquor these days, and I will, will pour myself another glass. Now we talk. Here we go. Yeah. Hey, by the way, thank you for the great pour, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the heavy hand works sometimes. <laughs> You know, we're kind of in a nostalgic mood, and I, I was telling you guys this story before, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on it, but I had someone in my family visit the house, and they saw my tower, and they looked at me like I was a crazy person, right? Okay, natural reaction. And they're like, why in the hell? Did they see the kitty litter? This is the new tower. <laughs> <laughs> this is new tower. Okay. No the, kitty litter. <laughs> not episode one, episode 85 tower. Um no, but they saw the tower and they said, what in the hell do you need all of these cigars for? Like, what are you doing with them? And then I went into the wine thing and I'm like, you know, if you have a wine collection, you age wine with time, you know, a lot of times it can improve. And unlike wine, I think a lot of cigars have a little bit more of a, what would you call it? A shelf life shelf or life, a, yeah. a, a peak, you know, mm-hmm. you know, where, where they really. A maturity curve. Mature. Yeah, wow. or, or or stronger aging, maturity, stronger aging potential. Exactly. Yeah, or, you know, or maturity curve, or maturity curve. I like both. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the not, listen- a co- not a competition. <laughs> we'll let the listener decide which one they like better. Uh, but you know, the thing I went into is I was kind of thinking about it, and, and we're talking about it tonight. Like for me, every one of those cigars in my tower is like a few a ticket that I've already purchased for like an hour, hour and a half, or two hours of just some sort of future experience that I'm going to have either by myself or with you guys or with others. Us too. We have a lot of tickets we stored have, in your human. Yes, life. we do. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a ticket to a concert that who knows when it's going to happen, but all of those cigars are representative of an hour, hour and a half, two hours of, of an experience, a special moment potentially, or just a time for relaxation for me in the future. Like, that's how I view my cigar collection. It's a beautiful way of putting it, right? I, like I, I, when you you said that earlier, and I was like, "Damn, that's, I got to mark that down in my head." That's a <laughs> great analogy. It is, yeah. And it's good for like, you know, when when the wife is saying, "What in God's name is there another box showing up?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's now like, I guess what say, you know what we're doing? We're buying time. Right. That's it. That's exactly right. This is. It's not about the rolled up leaves of aged tobacco in the hand. It's about the experience right. that this vehicle provides us in whatever we're doing. Like tonight, we're celebrating what we do here. We're enjoying this with our listeners, our friends. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's no other vehicle that can bring us in such a consistent, interesting, different way every time. That's right. You know, and and give us something unique, but also something that you can really count on yeah delivering like a really nice relaxing experience and and the other thing on that building on the wine analogy this is where they're very similar what's so cool about this is those cigars that are sitting in our towers how they taste in 2023 is different than how they're going to taste in 2024 Mm -hmm. and 25 and 26 and 2030 and so you know you're buying it knowing the generally the experience you're going to have, but there's this unknown of kind of, wow. it will be different. It's not the same yeah. every time. Like it's easy for someone to sit there and say, well, don't you get bored smoking the same cigar every single time? Hell no. And it's like, no, because some of them that were aging, I mean, first of all, some of them, if they tasted the same 365 days of the year for the next eternity, we're fine. We'd we're be happy with, with it. Yeah. Exactly. But even so, the it's fact that, that so many will change, that anticipation. that's what makes it so fun. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, going back on what you said earlier about longevity and anticipating, I had a, um, I was away with the family not too long ago, and my, I, was ha- I went outside, had a cigar, came back in. And, you know, Mrs. Bam Bam and her sisters, you know, well, how was that cigar? I said, it was great. I looked at my son. You and I are going to have a cigar someday. He said, we are going to have a cigar. Not now, but I'll let you know. All right. That, that's great. That's, that's awesome. I didn't say anything. But I felt so Did warm. Did that give you the, the oh, dude? Uh, the I tingle? I kind of <laughs> yeah. I didn't tear up. I'm tearing up now because I'm thinking about it. It's awesome. But that was a great experience. And when you collect cigars, you kind of hope for those moments. And dude, that's think what about you want. and think about what you have in your tower. 
that oh I've, I've, i'm actually going through the whole collection yeah, like, what is the what best, am i what's what the am best I, first cigar what's my first my cigars for my son's first cigar going to be i think about that now a millennium definitely i'm not sure well, that's my that's my go to. I know it's your go to. That was also you said your first cigar. It was my very first cigar. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, actually, that was the first cigar that I had when he was born. It might be a bit much for him as a first cigar, man. <laughs> give, uh, him this, give him this one. I think the Millennium is smooth. <laughs> <laughs> no, but think about how many other cigars you have in your tower. Even yeah. if you bought them today. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't have that many. And, yeah. Nah, I'm still, you know, trying to build. Yeah. Let's just say, let's hypothetically say your tower is quite full. Okay. Hypothetically. Oh, uh, we, we, have, we have the full inventory. I know we do. We I know. Photo proof. I'm trying to be kind. I'm trying to be kind. No, but seriously, d- dead serious. Like, think about how many great cigars you have in there that when he is ready, mm-hmm. you know, when he gets to that age that it's time, yep. like how amazing that experience is going to be for you to be able to select what that's going to be. That's right. And then present that to him and to introduce him to this beautiful I lifestyle. Agree. I can't wait for that moment. Yeah. What you'll have to prepare yourself for, though, are the odds that that first cigar, he may not enjoy that much. Of it's course. It's true. And I want to find something that he'll tolerate that's smooth and simple and elegant, but very flavorful. And we'll, I'll have a conversation with him about how it was made, where it was made, the blend. It'll and be, and when you bought that ticket for that experience. That, I, the tickets you know what I mean? bought and it's in like, the tower. Like when did you buy that box? That's fantastic. Ten years ago, absolutely. Twelve yeah. years ago, two years ago. Yeah. And why is that the perfect cigar? Right. For and that it, moment, the, all of that. It's the, it goes with this whole notion that you're presenting. It it's starts awesome. this it's conversation fantastic. with every person that you pull something out of your tower with. Totally. Whether agree. they smoke or not, just the, the moment you sit down, it's this is a commitment yep. to whatever I, it's going to be, yep. and and run with it. I yeah. just I love that you that you take it you take this passion so seriously that you're equating it to like the other great love in your life which is like buying tickets to a rock show yeah you music. Know? Like, <laughs> yeah you know? and that's so cool yeah because yeah. yeah. i think about it's funny you say that because you know i think about like when i think about important moments in my life with people even with bam okay one of the most memorable moments i have with bam is when he and i went to the dead and company show together that on a whim that was awesome. Last minute, we yep. bought a ticket. No hesitation. And we went, and we had a great experience together. We had a cigar. We Steaks. went to Peter Luger's. Oh, yeah. And we had a great night. And it's like, this is just another example of that same exact opportunity. Right. It's the catalyst. And yeah. instead of another person or another group creating it, we're creating it. Right. We're issuing the tickets. Yeah. You know? And it's a, it's a great way to kind of, you know, dog ear certain chapters in your life in certain moments you know underscore that that time yeah it's like my buddy uh my 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 friend had a uh, baby today which i know obviously you and senator have had kids fairly recently the other guys everybody in the room has kids but it's like think about those cigars you know celebrating the birth of your children or celebrating milestones you know uh, birthdays when they first start walking and talking and Becoming human beings, you I know. Can, I can see Senator Junior with an 80th in his hand. <laughs> He's already. Uh, he, he might be. He might beat Bam Junior to the punch. He, oh, he my, might. <laughs> my son, when he was a few weeks old, I've got a great photo of him trying to crawl toward a Padron box. <laughs> That's exactly what I was. Uh, that, yeah. By the way, I was just about and, to say and that. And in fact, his first proper crawl, and I think I sent you guys video of this was him trying to crawl toward and grab an issue of Cigar Aficionado. Oh. <laughs> Who was on the cover? Cigar Vixen? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now we talking. <laughs> Baby lizard. So, you know, a lot, lot of people also try to acquire boxes that correspond with their kids' birthdays. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. 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 And they smoke one every year. Right. And, you, you know, you get 25 years of that. Amazing. That's an amazing experience. It is. And then also... Just pulling it back, you know, taking the nostalgia out of it. To have a box of cigars and smoke one annually and and compare the experience year one, oh, year yeah. two versus five, ten. If, taking the nostalgia out of it. The just chronological saying, experience yes, of that. Yeah, like that's, here's that's where tremendous. this cigar was a year ago oh, versus yeah. five years ago. That journey is amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know? I think we, we, we summed this up really well when we did one of the Cuba episodes and we were talking about the time we sat in the Partagas shop and we're signing the guest book, and it's like you're sitting there reflecting on all these experiences in your life that Partagas has been a part of. Yeah, And that's what made it emotional mm-hmm. even. When you're signing that book, you're thinking like, wow, 
some of the greatest moments of my entire life yep. have involved that cigar. And I know you know what you smoked because I won't ever forget that moment. Yeah. You know what you smoked that day. Yeah. 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 Very memorable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It is a wonderful mechanism to instill reflection in your life because i think that's important for any person to have reflection in in your life you're not really a human being a conscious human being if you don't reflect and to have this part of our regular agenda protocol every day we're spending time to take time out right we're we're extracting this time and say we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make this our own we're gonna we're going to transform it in the way we want to. This experience is going to be ours. We're going to share it with others as we see fit. And it's going to be something special. And I think that's, it's great to have that. This, put aside health benefits or lack of benefits. Or detriments. De- wow. Detriments, yeah. Sure. Stress relief alone is Well, that, that helps, you know. Sure. But, you know, to have that mental space that you have set aside every day, it's therapeutic. And to piggyback on that just slightly. So when we're all together, it's very late at night, we're tired. Someone looks around, making sure. Sh- it says, "Let's order Wendy's." No, <laughs> <laughs> no. You see a cigar coming out of a case, and you think to yourself, "Should I go home, or should I have another cigar?" And you, I stay because you want to continue that feeling, regardless of how tired you are. Those moments are awesome. I don't should think I other, guys, should I other go? guys' box. Uh, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Rooster playing pagoda tonight. <laughs> I have no shame, none. <laughs> Cigars all about sharing, anyway. Yeah, so thank you. So okay. what's your what's your feeling on the uh, nostalgia piece of this or the ticketing thing that we threw out? I don't know. My kids were kind of born in the dark period, so I don't know. Those... <laughs> well, Leah was born the cigar in boom. The cigar boom. <laughs> yeah. So no, but you know, you're right. I mean, there's cert- certain cigars that kind of I associate like from the year that she was born, and then I do smoke that, you know, every so often, mm. and I kind of reminisce about that moment. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the cigar you smoked when your first daughter was born? No. Or the second really. daughter? Too long ago. Too long ago. Too long ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that for me, that millennium is that timestamp for me. Mm. Yeah. I think the other thing on all of this is <clears throat> this is building on what Grinder was saying. It just gives you it 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 always gives you perspective. Like you sit there and you have a cigar and you're sitting there saying to yourself, Wow, I spent fifteen dollars on this cigar, let's say. I'm having a phenomenal experience. I don't need to go somewhere fancy or special. I don't need to spend any significant sum of money to have some of the best experiences that I've had in my life. It's just been with a $15 cigar sitting with a group of guys like this and just the conversation and the exchange, the reflection, all of these things, that perspective, I feel like this helps you keep that all the time, which I really love. That's true. I mean, some of the best experiences that I have had are like smoking a cigar alone in the garage. That's true too. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Just it's so peaceful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, boys, I think we're coming into the last third, I would say, of the Padron 85 years, Family Reserve, Maduro. Yeah. What do you think? Kick-ass cigar. <sighs> I'm loving it. It's just amazing. And it's funny, as we're talking about this nostalgia thing and the relaxation and what it does, man, this cigar is checking every box. It is. Everyone. I was going to so say, it's, 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 it tracks very well with the conversation. It does. You know, and the sentiment. Because I... I, I I am, I am milking this very lightly. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, I don't want this to end. Yeah, and and I'm savoring every last bit. I'm smoking it like rooster. Yeah, as it should be. We all are trying. Because <laughs> <laughs> he has ash all over his shorts. Well, no. <laughs> <The he's>, <laughs> look at the ash on his cigar, though. That's an inch and a half ash. He's this, almost done. <laughs> this late of the game. That's awesome. Pagoda, how's it been? I love it. I really, <laughs> it's a 10, it's a 10, it's a 10. <laughs> I do like the second half of this is really settled in nicely. I mean, mm-hmm. I won't lie. The first few puffs, I was worried if it maintained that level of strength and spice that this would really kick me around by the end. But the second half just settles in, smooths out, so gets sweet. a little sweeter. I, I really it's like true. it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. 
So, boys, I wanted to talk about, because I think it's important as we talk about cigars in the business, let's pivot a little bit. So I don't know if you guys saw, but Cigar Aficionado put out uh, kind of a summary of a report that the Cigar Association of America, CAA, put out that for the first time in quite a few years, certainly since COVID, um, that there was a decline uh, in the cigar imports in the first quarter of this year. So you're looking at, I mean, in 2022, um, it was a significant increase. And certainly in 2021, there was a lot because people were home and smoking yeah. a lot more. You're at 104 million cigars. Yeah, in 2022, in the first quarter yeah. of 2022. And now it was an 8.8% decline in right. the first quarter of this year. 95 million. Yeah, roughly. 95 million, down about 10 million imports. And that's across the board on, on every uh, importer into the United States, obviously not including Cuba because that's not legal. But Dominican, Honduras, Nicaragua, everything um, is down. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, you you have to you have to look at those that in the context of the previous two years, right? Absolutely, because you don't really. I I saw that number, the headline number, and I I wasn't like, I I didn't I wasn't in dire straits for the 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 state of health of the cigar industry because of the previous boom years they had eight percent down from those years is still probably tracks to how they prorated the forecast i mean i think you really have to look at the pre-covid numbers exactly and to see you know where those are compared to where mm. where we are today i hope we can go back to the pre-covid prices that's <laughs> true especially in habanos well, very true the oh, devil's my. the devil's always in the details there were two things when you dig deeper in the article that really stood out to me that i was surprised by number one when they break this out by country, the Dominican Republic saw the steepest decline, uh, down 17.1%. Wow. Second That's a pretty to big that, number. huge, that huge. huge. Second to that was Honduras, down 10.7%. And then what was really interesting to me, Nicaragua was, and that's the leading non Cuban New World cigar producer was only down 4.2%. Well, that's good. Hmm. That's a good. That's good news. And my hypothesis, I mean, I think price plays a huge role in this. Sure. I think if you look at the price of certainly Dominican cigars and I'll just compare them to Nicaraguan ones and the brands that we have the most familiarity with there would be uh Davidoff and Padron. Right. Davidoff's price increases have been I would say significant. He's right. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you used to be able to get a late hour Churchill for $20 flat. Now it's like 26 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 26, 27. Right. Yeah. A Padron, we've talked about the price of an Exclusivo. It was $14 a year or two ago, yeah. and it's maybe $15 now. It's That's like right. a dollar price increase. And so I think Nicaragua's been a bit more judicious with the price increases, and I think it hasn't hurt um, their sales nearly as much as some of these others. Hmm. The second thing that was interesting to me, and this I have no explanation for, I'm very curious what folks think is the cause of this, they said that despite the decline in Q1, if you look at just March of 2022, that March was the busiest March in the last eight years in terms of cigar imports. Of 22. Yeah. Last year. Mm. Not this year. Ah, I see. Yep. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Mm. So that's Why coming. would that have been, though? In I, would think that's, I would think that's COVID that last... catch up. I would think that's maybe. COVID clearing yeah, the shelves maybe. and catching up. And but I would just... have expected in like 2021 when people yeah. were truly sitting at home. Well, there's oh, been yeah. a lot of back order cigars, yep. right? So you, I think you said catch up. I think it's a lot of people had orders in for a long time. Mm -hmm. It just takes a while and to fulfill them. They were, they were gangbusters for demand and, you know. They probably had they probably had to catch up on production. It would be interesting to see the 2021 numbers. A lot of shop owners that I've talked to said they saw a huge increase in sales. Yeah, work from home, people. Yeah, at home. everyone's home. Well, think of what we were doing then. Yeah, oh, we were we smoking were like even four or five nights a worse week. degenerates than we are now. <laughs> we were literally <laughs> yeah, sitting around, so <laughs> meeting up every week, just ordering, desperately and ordering, and smoking. And 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 not <laughs> this wasn't like a Thursday Friday thing. This was like every all night. week. Oh yeah, every day of the week. Every day was Saturday. <laughs> we had nothing better to do. That's yeah. true. It's like we would do the pod. And it'd be like any night the pod works because the other four nights of the week we're getting together at some in some capacity. We weren't traveling. Yeah. Like yeah. there's a lot of people that travel here. Yeah. We weren't traveling. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I think that, you know, I think there's two factors. Obviously, I think the change in going back to work for the, you know, the American workforce and obviously the price we, you know, we, you touched on that. But 
that is definitely playing a, a, a piece in every you know kind of cigar cuban non-cuban mm-hmm. everything you just said you know dominican nicaraguan honduran i mean price is playing a factor and not just the price of cigars but the price of everything else you know increasing so significantly sure. that there's just less free cash yeah. Yeah. to buy stuff that's not necessary no, less disposable income less yeah. disposable income. Income. And, yeah. and accessibility right you think about all the lounges in new york you could go to a Davidoff store and buy a couple of cigars and hang out in the lounge if you, as long as you bought a cigar there. Mm-hmm. Now you have to pay 100 bucks to sit down there after you bought a cigar. Wait, just a to, day just pass? To, just to get your ass yeah, in the seat. Yeah, a day pass. That's true. Bucks. That and, is obscene. And so it's, it's going to affect demand at some point, right? Because now you're trying to make it very, very exclusive. And the problem with that is you, you better hope you make a lot of margins and I, I think that's what explains the driving prices higher for the Davidoff cigars, right? Um, I, I don't know. I, um, a part of me feels that, you know, there's always this uh, back and forth between industry, prices, margins, sales. Um, it's just becoming ridiculous. People are taking advantage of the idea that inflation's in play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, has has price of cigar let's put traveling obviously a lot of us are traveling more than we've been naturally right some more than others in the group here um has price factored into your decision making on buying and or smoking cigars because Uh, i know for me i know my you know my storage situation i also Mm -hmm. i'm just not rushing to look at sales to look at because it's just not what it was Mm -hmm. so i'm buying as necessary i'm not buying kind of as yeah, I think in our case, we all have substantial inventory. The desire to buy for me as I was stocking my tower was tremendous. I didn't care what it cost almost at the time. Yeah, It's different now. I'm kind of glad that we purchased cigars when we did. Right, right, right. Especially Cubans. Yeah. Because the prices weren't that crazy. That's right. So about three, four years ago, and we started like collecting cigars. And now we are at a point where, you know, we have enough. Mm. We don't, we're not really looking for, you know, if there's some mm-hmm. special box that comes up on Bond Roberts, yeah, you go yeah. for it. But other than that, we're not really looking for to purchase cigars. But mm-hmm. here's the thing. I think we'd, we'd almost be lying to ourselves if we didn't all say that price has changed our purchasing habits. It has. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. say that because while Rooster says, you know, we have enough, if we're being honest with ourselves, we've had enough for a very long time, and yet we would still buy and buy. <laughs> None and of us buy were ever close to running out. That's the thing. No. And we would still do it. And the reason that we did it years ago is because a lot of cigars were reasonably priced that, you know, we were willing to take risks sometimes and buy a box for 300 bucks. And if I don't like it, okay, you know, I'll unload it in some way. Like, it just wasn't like I have to spend seven hundred dollars just to try this one cigar. Yeah. Not many of us want to do that, I, right? But at less than half that price, am I willing to take the gamble on a box? Sure, I'd be willing to. I mean, we used to do it all the time. Well, honestly, we did. when we yeah. first started buying up cigars, the com- the common refrain was, "Look at the value for money." Yeah, with these Cuban cigars, people always complain about Cuban cigars being pricey, hard to get, blah blah blah. And then we found ourselves with all of these boxes and we're smoking these other cigars and we're like, well, these Cubans are a thousand percent better and they're $5 cheaper. So we're going to smoke these. And that's what we were doing for a while. A lot of those st- standard production but cigars. That's kind, of, that's kind of reverse now. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The I dynamic know. is yeah, yeah. It's because of price. That's, that's what right. I'm saying. Yeah. We right. have to recognize. It's true. We are, yeah. we are changing our habits based on price. Well, and I'll say this, when I stand in front of my tower, I can't tell you that value is not coming into my brain when I'm going to pick something. Oh, for me, it does. I do not reach for something as freely as I did previously when I know that the cost to replace it, new world or not. Well, I personally find myself reaching more now for new worlds and Cubans. Yeah. Trying to preserve that just a little bit. Yeah. But for me, back when we were buying two, three years ago, I think timing was perfect. But for me personally, because I was building my inventory, I pricing wasn't a factor you just wanted to load up i did and the timing was great because the pricing was pretty good so it worked out beautifully right now i would still go after a cigar that i wanted if i if something comes up but i think yeah i'm looking at the tower and i'm looking at the big tupperdor new worlds and i'm going to that tupperdor more the, often than the tower the other thing is like when 
we would we would be willing to to spend the three hundred dollars on a on a box of Cubans and and just accept that we're going to have some some leakage. <laughs> some of those are going to be plugged. Some of them, you know, construction's going to suck. Blah blah blah. And we'd be okay with that. Now I think we're less okay with that. Yeah, mm. you know, and well, at least I am. I think we all, think all of us. us. Yes. I think the tolerance has gone way down. So you, as you, you Habanos affect, classifies you, it as a luxury affect, brand, like you affect, Louis Vuitton. Just, you affect this one variable in the consumer's mindset, and then that variable affects everything else. Because now I'm thinking, well, it's pricier, but I know some of these have construction issues, and that therefore the price per stick is going up even more. Because I'm not going to smoke a shitty cigar. That's time that I'm not going to ever get back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So all these things, it's not just price, but price is affecting these other variables that are coming in. Yeah, I, I think that's spot on. I'll yeah. give you a perfect example of this. Three, four years ago, I used to buy Epi 2s. Yeah, we did too. And, and I used to buy them because they were so reasonably priced that I knew half of them I probably wasn't going to enjoy. But the half that were great, I was going to enjoy those and it was worth it. Not now, now, I haven't bought an Epi 2 in three or four years because I'm not going to pay 500 something dollars a box for a cigar that maybe a third of them are going to be enjoyable and the right. rest are not. Right. So I, I think that's exactly right. Yeah. And and the other thing I'll say for me personally, I don't know if other guys feel the exact same way. I am just less adventurous because of the exactly. price point now. Sure. Well, I'm you way know, more risk averse now. My yeah. best example of that, and we reviewed this cigar and it's one of the highest scoring cigars that we've done, that Ramon Ionis 2019 Limitada. I bought two of those green boxes. Mm -hmm. Why? On a whim. On a whim. Why? Because it was more reasonably priced than not a cheap cigar then, no. but not the extreme, the extreme $50, $60 a stick it is now. And I was happy to do that. And I'm glad I did. I found something that I had never tried before that we gave close to a 10, if not, a, I mean, it was one of the highest ratings we've given this cigar. Excellent cigar. And so it's like, now, can I remember the last time that I've on a whim bought some Limitada box or... A region, I don't do that anymore mm -hmm. because I'm not going to spend $900 on a box of cigars that I'm not at all certain I'm going to enjoy. Th right. Those days are gone. I'm 100% correct. And I think the habit changed too because of the return to work. I, let, let's just say us in the room here, degenerates in the room. I think we're all smoking significantly less cigars than we were three years ago, two years ago. Mm -hmm. I know I am. Just because the nature of my life and, and going back to work and things changing a little bit, it's just changed how much I'm smoking. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think this uh, is going to be really detrimental for the new entrants as uh, it's going to be cost prohibitive. Yeah. Number yeah. one. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and it's, it's, it's not as easy to get those Lucy's that, that you, you know, that you hand out, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> what? Gizmo is waiting Somebody to hand us out. Eight, eight cabs of Lucy's sitting up. But, you know, I have eight cabs of Lucy's, but now I look at it and I go, that was the greatest thing I ever did. Yes, you did. Because I don't never, I, I don't need to buy another Lucy ever in my life. And like, I feel good about that because now it's like to replace any of those Lucy's I have, it the cost is through the roof. Yeah. It's through the roof. It's outrageous. So I used, I used to, I, I would, I would get up in the morning and I would, I would smoke. That was the first thing I would do. I would smoke a cigar and I would be on my deck all day smoking cigars, working, doing what I had to do. I was off camera. It's fine. And I just don't, I don't have that. I don't have that. I can't afford, I don't have that luxury anymore. Yeah, it's changed. Mm. You know, so. And, and to Pagoda's point, I think new entrants, when you combine everything we're talking about, scarcity of time, scarcity of product in some cases, price through the roof. Taxes, taxes regulations. Inflation on on normal necessary goods, not you know needs, not wants. That's where it's like the industry is really in a tough spot. 10, 15, 20 years from now, are there going to be guys like us who've passionately we we dove head first into this journey together, and some before others certainly, but really together we really dove head first into into to acquiring these things but we dove in with access to premium cigars the newbies now can't afford those premium cigars they're regulated to having the more affordable vitolas and marcas and those they may not leave the imprint on them to have them to continue to smoke they may stop the habit because yeah, everything we bought is now three or four x yeah. what it was I, I sit with guys that are new cigar smokers what they're smoking they don't like i give them something they love that how much was that oh that's a lot of money 
today. 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 Not today. when you bought it. No, no, today. Absolutely right. Not when you bought yeah. it. And so, that's the problem. Like when we've had this discussion many months ago when the price increases started getting outrageous. Yeah. And we were talking about Cubans in particular. Mm -hmm. I had said in the short term. There are still going to be tons of idiots in the Asian market and other places in this world that are going to buy at whatever price point these cigars are set at. But in the long run, this is where I think there's a huge miscalculation on their part, exactly what we're talking about, that young smokers, that son, or, you know, my son, Bam's son, yeah. you know, any of these future, you know, maybe cigar smokers, they're not going to be able to try and explore and take the same journey that we did because right. the barrier is going to be so high to entry. Yeah. yeah. And that ultimately affects the industry, right? In, a, in a structural way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In a financial way, it yeah. will. That's why yeah. like, I remain convinced then and now, in the long run, this is going to hurt them. And, you know, there are a lot more alternatives, right? Like vaping. You see a lot of these teenagers vaping. Which is awful. Flavored. It's awful. It is awful. But, you know, it's an alternative, right? I guess, yeah. So what you're saying is now you have competing... I don't think you can compare cigar smoking to vaping. Though. We no. can't. We can't. But no. the young we kids, can't compare. they can. But if they've never experienced what we experience here. And if they feel it's that too we share expensive. With, yeah, yeah, we share with our listeners yeah. every week. Yeah, if but they're, they're not experiencing I, no, that. but I feel like the Habanos pricing is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But on the New World side, it hasn't mm -hmm. really gone up that much but that they can't. Davidoff smoke. has, though. Somehow. Yeah, yeah, but so other than Davidoff. I but mean, and I think there's a lot of approachable But go back to what I said 10 minutes ago. The more affordable cigars are cigars that people aren't want to. They're not going to want to continue to smoke them because of the level of quality that they're getting. They're getting at that lower price point. They can only afford the cigars that you don't really want. And I think there's a tail on the prices of Dominicans and Nicaraguans. I think that a lot of these manufacturers have tried to weather mm. th this storm a little bit. Well, Nicaragua for sure. But the price increases are coming. Yeah. Even Padron, there's no way that they can afford all this inflation and all these cost increases and not raise the prices significantly. Like it's coming, even if it hasn't already. Maybe Habanos is in front of it because of the economic shit show that Cuba is and, and mm. the relationship that, that China has with Cuba and yeah. the worldwide resale market. And the new partner whatever, they have. Yeah. That we've talked about a thousand times. Yeah, yeah. But Dominican and Nicaraguan cigars, have to, they're going to catch up just out of necessity. You know, the economist, the economist in me tells me that this is a leading indicator and we're headed to a recession. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I love that we're laughing at that. It's terrifying. It is terrifying. It's a great conversation. I think it's an excellent topic. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's just... It it's, really is. Yeah. And to see that there's a decline, for whatever reason it may be, maybe the, sh the, the shelves are maybe a little more stocked now because they've caught up. Fine. But that's short term. The long term of it, is going to be very challenging. And what Senator said a few minutes ago, that miscalculation is going to reverberate well into the future. Yeah. I, and that's that's the awful part of this. I think all this is true uh, to some degree. I also, I, but I don't, I, it's been a challenge, it's a challenging market peddling cigars in the, to begin with. Okay. Yeah. So like they have a, they, ha I mean, they have a, a difficult uphill climb to begin with, I think, because it's, it's not a hobby that, it's not like teaching your son. It's not like teaching him how to get, play catch, it's right? True. It's it's, true. it's it's a you're you're smoking something. But no, tobacco no, product. no, no luxury good is right. I, well, I mean, they're all wants, not needs. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. But there's true. also a, a, a but, legislative. But there's a pretty significant component. addictive component to 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 inhaling or not inhaling, ingesting in some ways tobacco smoke. That is. That is nefarious, at least in this country. Yeah, but you can make the same argument about alcohol and look at how the spirit industry continues to grow. Look at how the co we're drinking a cognac. Yeah. Cognac market's exploding. And don't forget the marijuana. It's the market. fastest yeah. growing segment in yeah. spirits. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. No, but I, I think that, you know, tobacco certainly has a target on its head mm -hmm. a little bit and, com and, and, and piling that on everything we just talked about. The long game here is really challenged. It's really challenged. Yeah, we it, shall it, see. It's all sad because I think, you know, the opportunity that the industry has for the future is that the youngest generation and, and, and the younger generations generally, but just as you keep going younger and younger, they're chasing experiences, right? Like there were generations that were about possessions, not as things. much about ex things, not experiences. Yeah. And as you look at these younger generations, it's about experiences. That's what this is. Like yeah. this is actually ripe 
to market to someone who is looking for an experience that delivers relaxation, camaraderie, all these different things that we get out of this hobby. Mm -hmm. But the price is what's going to screw up that opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we've solved a lot of problems tonight, boys. <laughs> <laughs> it only took us 85 episodes, so, so we we're can, here now. We, we hey. can uh, take care of the debt ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to dive into that after yeah. the episode. <laughs> well, boys, what a fantastic pairing tonight. Oh, I'm yeah. interested to see where these ratings end up. Yep. What? Uh, any final thoughts here as we come to the end of the uh, Padron? A wonderful, wonderful experience tonight. It is so Across good, the board. so satisfying. Yeah. yeah, incredible smoke. I think Pagoda is going to be smoking a lot of these cigars. A lot more. Oh, I yeah. hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an anniversary kid now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready to do the formal liquor rating on the Martell? Yeah, VSOP. All right, Bam Bam, you're up. So I'm going to go with an eight. You know, I went higher on the other two VSOPs, but I think because there's a uniqueness to this, it's a little different. It's an acquired taste. It's delicious. It happens to go perfectly with the cigar. But other factors regarding the uniqueness of it, I just give it one point lower. Okay, eight. eight. Grinder, I I I'm gonna give it a nine. I really enjoyed it. I yeah. um, I think I'm becoming a cognac guy. Guys. Look at you, oh, there we man. Go. Look at you. I I've, I you. have yet to I have yet to have a bad experience with this stuff with yeah. you guys. And um, yeah, it just pairs so well with. I think it pairs well with all cigars, frankly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like. It just it just fits, and um, I enjoyed. Thank you for the brand history. That was, you know, pretty cool to learn. Uh, yeah, I'm at Martell. I like it. I'm, I'll drink more of this. All right, Pagoda. I think the only Martell I thought I would enjoy would be the bar in the Upper West Side <laughs> when I used to hang out a long, long time back. But uh, this has been fantastic. I think it's a nine for me. Okay, Senator. Uh, so I'm with Bam. I'm at an eight. I really like this. The 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 huge points that this scored. It's a rich, flavorful spirit at just a VSOP, just four years of age. Arguably, the richest VSOP that I've had, certainly, and that we've probably done on this podcast. The only things that precluded it from a nine for me. Bam described it as a as an acquired taste. For me, it's um it's a bit one note in that like that fruit note, whether that it's cherry, cherry or yeah, plum or yeah. whatever the case may be, that's really all I'm getting. And I wish there was just a little bit more complexity there. And I do feel like the Remy 1738 or I mean, hell, even Rem Remy VSOP, there's just a little bit more going on there. Um, you get a little oak in the VSOP at least. There's just something more there. So that's the only reason that I gave it uh, an eight over a nine, but I would definitely drink this again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I do think that this would pair excellently with plenty of cigars. Yep. And, and by the way, none of us reached for a chip of ice. That's true. That's I, true. I, I did merit. start. I'd start. Yeah. Oh, you ice. had ice. Yeah, yeah. But oh, I, I, I'd put, like I said, I put ice in everything. <laughs> So I'm also at an eight. I do think it's excellent. I really enjoyed it. But I do think some of the other VSOPs we've had have edged it out a little bit edge. at a nine. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm at an eight for sure. So the formal liquor rating on the Martell VSOP is an 8.4. Very it's good perfect. score. Very perfect good. score. Still, anything over an eight is an elite score. Honestly, a, a good recommend. And yeah, but makes... you know, considering the price point, would you say it was like 55 bucks or something? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I think it's fantastic. Great like, I'll definitely, definitely get Yeah. Uh, I love the Heinz Rare, by the way, yeah. for the same price point. And oh, I yeah. think this is going to work well as something different, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm looking for something, especially with a stronger cigar. So some of the other uh, VSOPs we did, uh, the Remy Martin was an 8.4. So that's right in line with this. And the Heinz Rare Cognac VSOP was a 9. Mm. So, and the H by Heinz did not score well. That's a VSOP, but it was a 6.8. So... We'll kind of count that out of the uh, the conversation. But, yeah, 8.4. I think it's a fair score for Good this. Good score. It's a great score. Yeah. And I think that the most encouraging thing, this makes me want to try so much more of Martel's uniquely extensive oh. line of cognacs. Please, let's do that. Yeah, I think we need Please. to keep going on cognac. Well, hot, it's been well, really rewarding. This particular maker, for sure. Yeah. I, it, it fits well with... Uh, the uh the pairing to martel doesn't mean doesn't that mean french or uh hammer in french 
That's a cool, look at that I don't grinder. Know. If that's the case, I, let me Google you get that. Some, perfect. You're I mean, you're getting some tonight, points grinder. on that. <laughs> Char- Charles Charles Martella was the hammer of uh, the Frankish king. He was because his. Uh, you should just check it out. I think it's. I think I'm right. Martell in old Frankish should mean hammer, which would go well with the hammer for the padron. Yeah, to you. Let me see. Seen Martell plural. A hammer, especially a war hammer. Look at this guy. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Very. I'm going to give Grinder a 10 on that call. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> you get a spank on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> a spank from you. Is oh, oh, oh. Let us know. Hey, we'll all leave the room. Get ready. <laughs> People pay a lot of money for that. Spank. They do. <laughs> all right, boys. You ready to do the formal lizard rating on the Padron Family Reserve 85 years Maduro? Yep. All right. Rooster, you're up. So I love the cigar and I love this. I love Padron and I love the family reserve and 85th is my go-to in out of all the family reserve lines. So I'm going to give it a nine. Excellent. Senator. Gosh, I hate these cigar ratings. They come to me <laughs> second. I'm sitting here contemplating and I hear Senator. Oh boy. Mr. Padron. Can someone drop a pen? Don't, don't <laughs> pressure him. Don't bias the conversation. How, how about this? Let, let me Clearly he's taking yeah. everyone else's score into consideration for his. No, own. no, no, no. This is purely, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also at a nine. And the reason I'm having to hesitate, no, actually, there's no hesitation needed. I gave the Exclusivo a 10. Yeah. Now I don't feel at all bad about this. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was worried I gave the Exclusivo a nine. And, and, and the only reason I will still reach for an Exclusivo over this it's just eminently smokable. I can just smoke so many. And it's more versatile worry. as yeah. well. So much more yeah. versatile. Yeah. Any condition. Exactly. Yeah. So for me, the the concentrated flavor that you get in this cigar, you can get in so few cigars. It's a huge merit to this stick. Um, I, it, it's interesting. It, 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 it's kind of a two-act play. It actually does change a bit. It starts a little spicy Definitely, and yeah. really full and then kind of settles into medium full and, and smooth. And um, the flavors just all really marry nicely. Uh, the only reason for me it's a nine and not a ten is I I can't smoke more than one of these in a sitting, and um, even for as much as many as much flavor as you get in this cigar, it doesn't have the level of complexity that would check a ten. So I'm I'm firmly at a nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, All it's right. kind of like you know like I would say if the the ten score for the eightieth, yep, and the fiftieth hammer, yeah, yep. right. Well, you're now Other than that, preempting I mean, this your. Is a nine. Well, the fifty. True. I mean, that's a ten. Yeah, yeah. and the exclusivo, but uh, sure, sure. <laughs> Only one of us really loves that cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Only three of us, four of us. Well, so we, I'm well, also at a nine for sure. Um, I, I thought the cigar was excellent. The reason why it's not a ten for me, despite its performance, is it's just its application in my rotation. Um, I do have a box. I don't reach for it very often, not because I don't like it. But just because of where it slots, it's very precisely slotted. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think it's an excellent cigar. But like you know, Rooster and Senator both said, for me, it, it is edged out by the 80th, by the Hammer, by the Exclusivo. Like those just edge this out in my decision to to have a cigar. So nine for me all day. Mm-hmm. Pagoda. It's a ten for me. Hey, there's, all right. There's, there's oh, no man. question about it. I love it. I love the flavor profile. I've really enjoyed it. I'm surprised I haven't really uh, tried this before and um you know it's going to come into my rotation for sure yeah. truly up your power alley yeah. Absolutely. Great, yeah. great rating for yeah. you yeah. When, when there's a shortage of these we'll know why <laughs> we'll know exactly why <laughs> can't find them anywhere grinder it's a it's a nine for me i i don't think i need to apologize or editorialize for not giving it a 10 it's a, it's a standalone fantastic cigar it's in my top tier of all time right now so good thank you rooster it's delicious Awesome. Bam, bam. Yeah, this is easy. It's a nine. All right. So the formal lizard rating on the Padron Family Reserve 85 years in Maduro is a 9.2. Wow. Perfect. Excellent. That's a perfect score. Perfect. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. What is What did the Exclusivo get? Exclusivo, I think, edged nine it out four. a little bit. 9.6. Nine, 9.6. Six. Nine, six. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the Just, pa- Padron 1964 Torpedo in Rooster, Rooster is probably responsible for that point four. That uh, maybe. Lost. What did I get the exclusive? I think it was a nine. You, you a nine. Uh, you Grinder and Bam all gave it nines. Puba, Giz, Senator, and Pagoda all gave Tens. it tens. Yeah, 
Makes sense. Um, Makes sense. So yeah, the Padron 1964 Torpedo and Natural is an 8.7. Uh, and I think we did one more, the 80th, of course. Oh, no, it was a 10.0. 10, 10 across the board. The, you know, the versatility of the Exclusivo edges this out, but this is, to me, there's a bit more complexity to this, just a bit. When I get Coco on the Retro, but during the life of the cigar, it's it's a richer it's a richer. Smoke. It is, you know, what's yeah. cool about it. Yeah. I get raisin, Senator. You mentioned that that stayed with me all the way to the half inch, and earth notes and coffee, retro cocoa. That's a complex cigar. I will say just me. one thing to split hairs for me. I I think this is a much richer cigar than the Exclusivo right. than sure. the whole yeah. sixty four line. But the only thing I will disagree with, I don't think it is a more complex cigar. And I say that mm. because I actually get more earth in the Exclusivo than I do this cigar. This cigar for me is very much like raisin, cocoa, and like sweet notes. I just got spice for like the first half like, just, just felt like beginning. 30 seconds yeah. of yeah, it, basically. Yeah. And and for the Exclusivo, I just feel like that the earth notes are are like right there dancing next to the cocoa and sweet notes and coffee you get in the Exclusivo. So I I would not say this is more complex. I actually think the Exclusivo is slightly more complex. But this is a way richer smoke. You're biased. I slightly disagree with that, but I have no issues with it. <laughs> You're wrong, but I like you. <laughs> He's not wrong. Well, boys, a fantastic uh, starter celebration as we approach episode 100 tonight for episode 85 and 8.4 for the Martell VSOP. Cognac, great cognac. Even despite 8.4, that was a really good cognac. Very good. And a 9.2 for the Padron Family Reserve, 85 years in Maduro. Time out. It is our 85th episode, so I actually I want to meet in the middle. They're equally as complex. Love you. <laughs> I love you for that. As I took the last puff of this, hey, it honestly hey, changed. Hey, oh, hey, hey. Vindication. Look at you changing <laughs> Senator's mind. I like that. Is this new? You know how rare that is? This is new. <laughs> That's the first time in 85 episodes. It's working. All right, boys. A great night. We'll see you next week. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for joining us. You can find our merch store and ratings archive at our brand new website, loungelizardspod.com. That's loungelizardspod.com. Don't forget to leave us a rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. If you have any comments, questions, if you want to reach out, say hello, tell us what you're smoking, email us. Hello at loungelizardspod.com. You can also find us on Instagram at loungelizardspod. We really appreciate your time and we'll uh, we'll see you next week.